hi guys welcome to the first video on our graph series in this video I'm going to introduce you to graph data structure this video and the one following are going to expose you to all you need to know to get started with solving top graph interview questions asked in top tech companies like Google let's get started what exactly is a graph data structure graph is a non-linear data structure consisting of nodes and edges a tree is a special type of graph so all trees are graphs but not all graphs are trees let's compare the two graphs have nodes which can be connected together and there can be multiple parts between these nodes that are connected together for example, in this our graph, we can see that um, there are multiple parts from node 0 to node 3. One person can decide to move to node 3 from node 0 by moving from node 0 to node 1 to node 2 and then to node 3. Another person can decide to move from node 0 to node 1 and then to node 3. Another person can decide to move from node 0 to node 4 and then to node 3. Another person might even decide to move from node 0 to node 1 to node 4 and then to node 3. So, there are multiple parts between connected nodes. We can also find a disjointed node in a graph. This is a node that is standing alone and is not connected to any other node like node 5. A tree, which is a special type of graph, has a special node called the root node, which is the very first node of that tree. And every other node in a tree will have only one parent node except the root node. There is only one path from the root node to any other node. You can see that from node 1, which is our root node, we have only exactly one path to node 5, which is moving from node 1 to node 3 and then to node 5. And the same thing is applicable to every other node. Now, we can see that an edge is simply the line connecting two nodes. Also, graphs can have cycles, but this is not possible in trees. Cycle simply means that you can move from one node and still return back to that node. For example, we can move from node 0 in this graph to node 1 to node 4 and then come back to our node 1. Now, let's talk about the different types of graphs. We have different types of graphs based on some factors like the direction of the graph. Here we have the directed and the undirected graphs. A directed graph is a graph whose edges are unidirectional, that is pointing to one direction or will I say a particular direction. We can see that in this graph, zero specifically points to node 4 and node 4 specifically points to node 3 and node 3 specifically points to node 1. And node 1 specifically points back to node 4. And node 2 specifically points to node 1 and points to node 3. On the other hand, an undirected graph is a graph whose edges are bidirectional. That is, points both ways. What this means is that node 0 in this undirected graph points to 1 and 1 in return points back to 0, that is bi-directional, they point both ways. So node 1 also points to node 3 and node 3 points back to node 1. Node 2 points to node 1 and points to node 3. And node 1 and node 3 in return points back to node 2. So that is what is meant by bi-directional and points both ways. Usually, if the direction of a graph is not mentioned, it is safe to assume that it is an undirected graph. Another factor to consider is whether there is a cycle in the graph. 
A graph that contains a cycle is called a cyclic graph. And the one that does not contain any cycle is called an acyclic graph. Now, we can see that in this graph, there is a cycle. So this can be called a cyclic graph because node 0 points to node 4, node 4 points to node 3, and node 3 points to node 1, and node 1 in return points back to node 0. So this is a what? Cycle. The last factor is whether the edges have values. So a graph whose edges are assigned values, it can be any value, it can be a cost, it can be distance, it can be speed, etc. It's called a weighted graph. And a graph whose edges have no value is called an unweighted graph. Great. Now, let's talk about how we can represent these graphs in code. We can represent a graph in an adjacency matrix or adjacency list. In adjacency matrix, we create an n by n matrix, where n is the number of nodes present in the graph. So both the columns and the rows in the matrix represent the nodes in the graph. As we can see that our graph has node A, B, C, D, E, and they are well represented in our row and also in our column. So to fill up the adjacency matrix, if there is an edge between two nodes, we store the value one. If there is no edge between the two nodes, we store the value zero. So for this graph, we can see that A points to B and A points to E. Take note that A does not point to D. So the nodes adjacent to A are node B and node E. Adjacent nodes of a node are nodes that that particular node points to. For example, adjacent nodes of A are the nodes that A points to, which are node B and node E in this case, right? So we can see that A has only two adjacent nodes, which are node B and node E. So on this row A, we fill in one for column B and one for column E, and the rest will fill it up with zero. So for node B, Node B points to node D and points to node C, which means it has only two adjacent nodes, which are node C and node D. So for row B, we fill one for column C and one for column D because they are the adjacent nodes of B and the rest will fill them up with zero. The same thing is applicable to node C. So node C points to no node. So node C does not point to any node at all. It does not have any adjacent node. So we fill up the whole row with zero. Node D points to node A and points to node C. So it has only two adjacent nodes, node A and node C. So we fill one for column A and one for column C and the rest will fill up with zero. For node E, node E points only to node D. So it has only one adjacent node, which is node D. So we fill up one for column D under the row for E and then fill zero for the rest of the cells. Hope this makes sense. On the other hand, in the adjacency list, you only store the list of adjacent nodes of each node. For example, in this graph, to create the adjacency list, we have to create an object with each node as key and its value, an array of all its adjacent nodes. Now, we already know that node A has two adjacent nodes, which are node B and node E, because these are the only two nodes that A points to. So, for node B, it has node D and node C as its adjacent node. So we fill it up. For node C, node C has no adjacent node because it doesn't point to any node. So this is an empty array. 
Node D points to node A and node C. So we fill it up with node A and node C. And finally, node E points to only node D. So it has only one adjacent node, which is node D. So we fill it up. In both adjacency metrics and adjacency list, we talk about adjacent nodes. In the adjacency metrics, if there is an edge between two nodes, we store the value 1. If there is no edge, we store 0, which is why we need more space in the adjacency metrics. More space because this metrics is simply an array of an array. And these arrays have a constant length of 5 because we have 5 nodes. So we can see that in node C, we have an array of length 5, which the values are all zeros. So we are taking up unnecessary space in this case. Even though there is no adjacent node, to C, we still have to store the value 0. So what this means is that if your graph is dense, dense means that almost all the nodes are connected, right? Then it might not be a big deal since the spaces you will be using for zeros will be small because almost all the nodes are connected. Almost all the nodes have adjacent nodes, right? But if your graph is not dense, then Adjacency metrics might not be a great option because you'll be storing zero in most cases and occupying unnecessary spaces. But this is not the case with an adjacency list because in adjacency list, you store only the adjacent nodes. For node C, which has no adjacent node, you see that we are saving up space because we have an empty array. So we are able to save up some space all right so hope this was useful and you now understand what a graph data structure is the different types of graph and how it can be represented in both an adjacency list and in an adjacency matrix great assignment for you so i would suggest you try creating an adjacency matrix and an adjacency list for the undirected graph by yourself to consolidate what you have learned and then join me in the next video to check out the correct answer and also to learn how to traverse a graph if this was useful please support my channel by liking this video and subscribing to my channel and i'll see you all in my next video bye